From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Evening Edition. Live from the CBS studios in San Francisco, I'm Brian Hackney. And I'm Andrea Nakano. We begin in Berkeley, where police are reporting a major increase in crime, especially with car thefts. Berkeley police say 703 cars were stolen in just the last 180 days. That's a rate of four cars per day. So to fight crime, some city officials are proposing automated license plate readers at entrances to the city. And as John Ramos reports, it's got residents engaged in a debate about crime and privacy. When people living in a quiet neighborhood like this are demanding the city take action against crime, it usually gets a response, even if it means using a controversial technology in the effort. This North Berkeley neighborhood doesn't seem like it would be a hotbed of crime, but from his front porch, David Taylor says in recent years, his cul-de-sac has become a dumping ground for stolen vehicles, and he was once shot at during an attempted robbery. I think what's actually happened is crime has become a lot more dangerous for victims, right? You don't just get your, your phone stolen, you also get stomped in the face after you're on the ground. As a systems engineer, he favors an analytical approach to the problem. We live in a high-tech area. It seems like we've been using high-tech tools to fight crime, and it doesn't seem like we are. So a city council member has asked the police to re-examine a plan to install 52 automated license plate readers that would record all vehicles coming and going as an aid to law enforcement in the event of a crime. Flock Safety, a private vendor, would be responsible for the data, which would be held for 30 days. The idea is to place them on streets at the city's borders, like here on Alcatraz Avenue. But that's where Chip Moore lives. Being under constant video surveillance is not the American way. Besides being a neighborhood resident, Moore is also the chair of the Police Accountability Board. He opposes the use of the license cameras because of how they could be used in the future. What happens when we decide we want to use facial recognition and recognition with this same technology? It's in place. It's capable of doing that. And I feel like once that slippery slope, once we put a toe over, it's very hard to stop that momentum. Jenna Huang lives along Alcatraz and could potentially be recorded every time she left or arrived home. I'm generally opposed to anything that's like automated license plate imaging or facial recognition or anything like that. I just don't think it's um, right to uh, track, you know, everyone coming in and out, and it's unclear how that data would be used. For now, the debate boils down to what people fear the most. Is it crime or the police themselves? I would argue with anyone who feels like it's the only way that we could have our communities be safe is that we have to watch everyone all the time. That's no way to live in our, our, in our country or our community. Okay. Totally fine. Put one right there. Happy to. I mean, they'll actually catch quite a few, quite a few crimes, uh, getaway cars. Yeah. Any rules surrounding the use of the license readers are still being negotiated. Final approval would have to come from a vote by the city council. The issue will be discussed again at the next meeting of the Police Accountability Board that's coming up on July 12th. Oakland's 911 response system was back running again after a power outage, but the automated dispatching system is still having some problems tonight. Oakland released a statement saying that staff have returned to manually routing calls and it's slower than usual. This comes a day after dispatch services were restored after a power outage on Thursday. Response times were impacted as dispatchers had trouble communicating with officers out in the field. The dispatchers are toiling literally with papers and pen, writing down individual calls, running across the room, giving it to the dispatcher, and then sending it out to the officers in the field. City officials closely watching the system. They say if you do call 911 over in Oakland and your call drops or is busy to hang up and try again. Taking a live look now at San Francisco's waterfront at Pier 27, where the Princess Cruise ship remains docked for the third day in a row. And there's good news and some bad news for the thousands of passengers aboard the ship. Their Alaska cruise is still on, but the bad news is it's going to be cut a little short. The ship is not setting sail until tomorrow. Crews are fixing a hole left by the ship's impact into a dock Thursday morning. The original 10-day itinerary included four stops in Alaska. Now it'll be cut to seven days with only one 12-hour stop in Ketchikan. We caught up with a passenger who's making the most out of her stay. 
We're on vacation. We've been reading, watching TV, walking around, talking to people about, you know, what's going on. We watched a young gentleman carving his totem pole. So, um, yeah, we've just been keeping busy. This is our sixth cruise to Alaska, so we don't book a lot of tours, but we were really looking forward to going to um, Glacier Bay. That's one of our favorite spots. And so uh, we're disappointed that we're not going there, but Ketchikan is very nice. Princess Cruises is also offering refunds and discounts to the passengers. San Francisco's Union Square has fallen on some hard times. There's not as many people down there. Nearby retailers pulling out left and right, like Nordstrom, Old Navy, and the downtown Westfield Shopping Center. Many of them say crime is the reason they're closing up shop. Burglaries were up nearly 14% over last year, theft up uh, by more than 1%, violent crime down by 2%. That's all according to SFPD. But they're trying to lure people back to Union Square with the magic word free. Don Lynn checks out the musical strategy. This is a new program, live music every Saturday afternoon until October here at Union Square. They're trying to jazz things up and bring some life back to the shopping district. Business owners, welcome to help. They say music brings people together. The hope is it'll also help drum up foot traffic in Union Square and other parts of downtown. Business owners have been hit with the blues since the pandemic. Add on open drug use and homelessness. Many stores could not survive since customers stayed away. There are at least three vacant storefronts across from the square and many more nearby. We did kind of cut our hours on certain days. All right, guys, come on. Manit Sohal's family owns San Francisco Deluxe, the hop on and hop off tour buses. We're probably at about 60% right now, 60%. probably at about 60%. His business about 60% compared to pre-pandemic levels. This is how Union Square looks on a Saturday afternoon in July. It's just not as busy. There's not as many tourists around here as you can see. Uh, the foot traffic is not so much. The Office of Economic Workforce Development, Rec and Park, and the Union Square Alliance teamed up to kickstart the summer music series. The free concert showcased local musicians and enticed families to return to downtown. We have a strong police presence here. It's very clean and safe. We have our Union Square ambassadors who go and power wash and make it very clean and they're picking up trash. Businesses and visitors say they're seeing improvement. Gone are the folks who used to shoot up drugs in front of tourists. This footage was taken in 2019. It's so clean. Now, a scary scene on the Altamont Pass in the East Bay today. A big rig rolls over to the side of the freeway causing a fiery crash. One adult and four children were taken to the hospital. It happened on the eastbound lanes of 580 near North Flynn Road around 530 this morning. Alameda County Fire says the driver and kids escaped from the cab of the big rig when it caught on fire after the crash. There's still some traffic in the area and at last check, the two left lanes remain blocked off. And now to Marin, where more and more bears are showing up in people's backyards. Most recently, a bear was spotted wandering around Drake's Bay, which is not really anybody's backyard at the point where he's national seashore. But they have also been spotted near more populated areas. Kenny Choi has got that story. Home security cameras capturing at least one American black bear roaming through neighborhoods from Kentfield to parts of San Rafael and Fairfax. To me, a bears are so kind of mythical and, and interesting. Peter Bardo, a self-proclaimed wildlife geek, set up cameras not far from the recent sightings as a field researcher for the River Otter Ecology Project within the Mount Tamalpais watershed. Last July, he couldn't believe what showed up. You see the eye shine, and it was right over there, <laughs> and it looked like, I go, oh my God, is that a bear? It wasn't just one, but two cubs frolicking and wading in the cold creek. Bardo, also a volunteer for the North Bay Bear Collaborative, searches for paw prints and scat to test DNA. California Fish and Wildlife estimates the population has tripled since the early 80s. As it is growing, they are starting to be pushed out further. They're running out, they need to find open space. And here is more open space that doesn't have many bears yet. One resident spotted this bear in a Kentfield neighborhood in early June. Another homeowner in Lucas Valley was stunned to see this in her backyard. The Marin Humane Society and Wild Care are keeping a close eye and asking residents to contact them if a bear visits again.
It appears that the bear is doing exactly what we had hoped that he would do, which is move away from the populated areas of Marin County. That was our biggest concern. To keep humans safe and bears too, experts say not to bait them by leaving out food or making it easy for bears to access trash. Putting water out, oh, poor a bear showed up my camera and looked like it was thirsty. I'm going to put some water out for it. I know the intentions are good, but it could end up being the end of that bear. Bardo and other naturalists are trying to determine how many black bears are using the watershed as part of their range and helping educate concerned residents living in the wildland urban interface. It's all on kind of people to figure out how to how to keep them, you know, safe and away from uh, temptation. The proliferation of cameras is documenting more sightings. Since last year, the two cubs playing in the creek haven't made another cameo in the same spot. But Bardo and other naturalists are curious about what may come next. Hopefully, it is one of those things where they can manifest themselves here as a resident population without it becoming this, uh, this uh, scary story. <laughs> For now, Bardo can only wait until the next sighting, wherever that may be. And by the way, if you see a bear, experts say the most important thing to remember is to try to stay calm, <laughs> avoid running, Back away. Boy, if I were to see this guy, I'm going to back know. away slowly and encourage, encourage the bear to move along by clapping, yelling, and making noise. You first. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a pretty vicious looking bear. <laughs> Our live look at Oracle Park and right behind the stadium in Mission Bay, eight kayakers had to be rescued this afternoon. No one was hurt, but six of the people rescued were between 11 and 15 years old. It's been so choppy out on the water that the National Weather Service has issued a small craft advisory for the bay. Well, the search is on for a stolen therapy dog in training. This is Buddy. He was reported stolen near 4th Street in downtown San Rafael yesterday. Buddy is a Cavalier poodle mix with white, short, curly hair and brown spots. He's also wearing a green collar. San Rafael Police is asking anyone with information to come forward. Thrive City turned into a puppy hangout this afternoon. The event is called Positively Summer. Dogs had a chance to make new friends and enjoy pet friendly activities. There is a pet food truck serving up pup cups. You know, we just want to have people come together with joy and healing and how better to do that than with dogs that are fluffy and wagging their tails and making us laugh. Yeah, dogs are pretty cool. There was also a puppy adoption station. Positively Summer runs every Saturday this month from 10 a.m. until noon. They're, dogs they're are wonderful. Great animals. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back at 11. Until then, the news continues on CBS News Bay Area.